Namaste yogis. Thank you for joining me today. If you watched the last video, the answer was amaryllis. The plant that we showed in that video is called an amaryllis. It is blooming this week, so I will show you what the blooms look like. So this plant I have had for about five years. Um, what probably threw people off in identifying it is that it has no leaves. And this plant has always had leaves. So the past four years it always grew the leaves first and then the stem and then the blooms. But this year for some reason it grew the stem without any leaves. And I can see that there are some new leaves forming. So it's not really a problem, but it's kind of weird. So if anyone knows the answer to why it does that, then you can also comment uh, below. I've heard that there are varieties that shoot out the stem before the leaves, but I don't know if um, it does this. Sometimes it sends out the leaves and once in a while it just sends out the stem. So I'll show you this one. This is what the leaves really look like. And this is actually the baby of this one. I had this one for five years. About the second year I took one of the seeds and tried planting it. And this is what I got three years later. And you notice this doesn't have the stem. There's no flower. I also did some research on that. And apparently amaryllis only produce flowers. Um, when you plant them from seeds, it takes 3 to 14 years to get a bloom. So it's a long-term project. It's kind of like a bonsai where you do all the work over many, many years. And then you get your final um, not really a final product, but then you get to see the results of what you're growing. Or maybe it's even like raising a child where you put in all your efforts for many, many years and um, see what the results are. And that it's kind of a little more, adds a little more interest to it. But it does take a lot of patience as well. But I'm, I'm very happy with this one. The leaves are really beautiful. So even if it didn't have a bloom, it's a very nice plant so if you're looking for a plant to grow some interesting plant that takes patience this is one of them and you'll get some good rewards from it so now we'll start our yoga session so let's begin with the chant bring your hands in namaste om sahana vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahabidyam Karavavahai Tejasvinavati Tamastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Take your hands behind your back, grab one wrist with the other hand, and bow forward. Today's talk is about asteya, or non-stealing. Let's begin by taking a look at what the Yoga Sutras say about non-stealing. When non-stealing is established, all jewels or treasures present themselves or are available to the yogi. Most of us believe that we should not take things that do not belong to us. When we think of stealing, we usually think about stealing somebody's bag or their money or their Amazon package or uh, stealing merchandise from a store. But there are also other types of non-material stealing. One example would be to steal somebody's time. If we have an appointment with someone or promise to meet someone at a certain place at a certain time and we arrive late, um, there might be excuses for it. We might have been caught in traffic or we're running a little late, but still by having them wait for us, that is an act of stealing. It's stealing that person's time. Or cutting in line, for example. When somebody cuts in line, then the people, all the people who are waiting there have to wait a little extra time because that one person was impatient and uh, did not follow the rules. So that person would also be a, a thief, stealing other people's time. 
We can also steal other people's happiness. Examples would be maybe intentionally, knowingly having an affair with somebody else's spouse or uh, maybe eating a food that was meant, it was prepared for somebody else, but because it was there, we just ate it. Or um, maybe blocking somebody from attaining their goals, intentionally um, blocking somebody. So those can be examples of stealing other people's happiness. And how about people who constantly interrupt others, or they talk, 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 and do not listen. They try to dominate the conversation. Uh, these people also are stealing because they are not allowing other people to express their opinions, to say their point of view. So they are also stealing. There are also other examples such as um, stealing somebody's ideas. Patent infringement is a big problem nowadays. Or we can steal somebody's kindness. If, you're, if um, someone is kind to us and we do not thank them or reciprocate in some way or at least show some gratitude, then that in a way is stealing that person's goodwill, stealing, stealing their uh, uh, kindness. So when you think like that, there are many other forms, non-material forms that we can... Um, commit um, stealing, the act of stealing. It does not have to be property. But um, we live in a world, when we think about it, we live in a world where there's a lot of give and take and everything's not black or white. Sometimes um, there are people who are more of givers. They're more generous. They're always helping others. While there are other people who are uh, more takers or they're more needy. So they naturally need more help. Maybe they were born in unfortunate, they um, live in unfortunate situations, so they might need more help. And even thinking of ourselves, sometimes we may need more help ourselves, where at other times when we're doing good, we might be able to afford to help others. So it's a give and take situation. In our eagerness to practice asteya, we have to be careful not to... Um, impose too many rules, both on ourself and on others. Uh, for instance, um, if somebody's at a party and they're singing this popular song, we don't accuse them of uh, stealing somebody's music. Or if somebody, uh, a friend comes to our meeting f five minutes late, our luncheon meeting five minutes late, we start accusing them of stealing our time. Or we might go into a, a bank and accidentally take the pen home with us and then we beat ourselves down. Oh, why am I stealing somebody's other, somebody's pen? So we don't want to overdo it or we don't want to get too technical about it. Um, there's this real good teaching in most traditions and we call it the golden rule. And it's, it is called the golden rule because it is golden. It is a very uh, valuable rule. And basically it states that um, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. And don't do to others what you don't want um, others to do upon yourself. So it's kind of a common sense thing. What many people do is that they have a different standard for themselves and others. So they, this one act, they might say, oh, that act is very evil, and they might criticize somebody for doing it, but then they go around and do that same act, and when they do it, they always have an excuse of why it was okay for them to do it, but not others. So that's what the golden rule tries to cut through. And really, this is a very simple rule. Um, in human relationships, if we all practice the golden rule, then we wouldn't even need to think about the yamas. So the question is not really what we steal or how we steal, but why we steal. We are always conditioned to compare ourselves with others. And when somebody has something that we don't or um, more than we do, 
then we tend to get jealous or feel that we are entitled to more. To attain happiness, we must learn to see all the blessings in our life. It could be the sun that rises early in the morning, or it could be the gentle breeze that blows against our skin as we take a walk, or our friends that help us in times of need, or the meals that we eat every day. Just simple things like that. So everything in our life is really a blessing, including some of the things that we might not necessarily appreciate, some of the lessons in our life. When we really think about it, what else could we possibly need? A new car or a new house or a, a new handbag, new shoes, would that really bring us happiness? All the jewels are already available to the yogi. It's just that we have to open our hearts and take notice of them. Okay, let's begin. Stand up. Let us start by waving the arms from side to side. back to the center. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Do about 10 at your own pace. Try it with your eyes closed if possible. Slowly come back up. We'll make circles with the arms. So circle in one direction and switch direction. One direction and back. Let's do about five in each direction. Getting the shoulders warmed up. And relax when you're done. So stand on your mat with your feet slide apart, interlace your hands, inhale stretch upward reaching as high as you can. We'll start by holding it here for a few breaths. Reach as high as you can. You can come to your tiptoes if you want or keep your heels on the mat. Feel a nice stretch along your spine. Inhale and exhale, bend to your right. Inhale, slowly come back to the center. Exhale, bend to your left. Kind of twisting your body upward, slightly upward, looking upward. Deep, full lung breathing. Inhale, slowly come up to the center. Exhale, bring your arms back to your side and relax. Shake it out. Okay, so let's interlace the hands behind the back. We'll fold back and then forward. Let's open the legs a little uh, wider today. So with your inhale, take your shoulders back and look up towards the ceiling. Take a few deep breaths. Feel a nice stretch to the front side of your body. 
pushing your chin upwards. Inhale, slowly come up. And exhale, fold forward. Arms can be raised behind your back or you can set them on your back if that's too much. And just fold forward and hang. Inhale, slowly come back up. Exhale, release the arms and release the pose. So we're going to do a pose called uh, Parsva Konasana now. Stand with, uh, to one end of the mat and step back with your left foot. So right foot in front, left foot back. This is a normal stance that we use a lot in yoga. So we bend the front knee, straighten the back knee. The back foot points slightly forward, about 45 degrees. In this pose, we'll place the forearm, the right forearm, on top of the right thigh, pointing the fingers out, spreading the fingers wide apart. And with your inhale, raise your left arm up, stretching either upward, or if you feel like going further, exhale, take your left hand further towards the right. You can hold it here. If you're a little more flexible, you can lower your hip. So the goal is to get a straight line from the tip of your left pinky down to your left heel. Reaching high up. Um, it's difficult to get the, the feel in the beginning, so you can even do it uh, looking at a mirror and making sure it's flat. Now a lot of people won't be able to have your hips in this position. If it's way up here, that's fine. But it's just something to work towards. And look upwards. Close your eyes if available. If not, keep them open. With your inhale, slowly come up, point your feet forward, hands to your side. Exhale, lower your arms and we'll just flip around to the other side. Do the other side. Bend your left knee, point your, or straighten your right knee and point the foot forward. Place your left forearm on left thigh and we'll raise the right arm. Inhale, raise the right arm, look up. Either stay here or exhale, take your right arm further to the left. If available, lower your hips. Try to make a straight line from the right pinky to the right heel. Looking upwards and closing the eyes if available. Otherwise, keep them open. Spread your left fingers wide apart. Inhale, slowly come up. Point your feet forward, arms to your side. Exhale, release the arms and release the pose. Let's do a pose called Garudasana. The full pose we'll do today. So, it may be a little difficult for some of you just keep your foot both feet on the mat at all times or you can use the support of a wall so we'll start by bringing the right arm in front of the chest palm facing to the left and hook your um, left arm over the right try to bring your hands as close to namaste as you can or 
wherever works for you. So we have the right arm on top. Let's bring the left leg over the right and then bend down. So you can keep both feet on the mat. That's the easiest version. You can raise your left foot off. You can hook your left foot around the right leg, whatever works for you and try to keep your elbows pushed up and hold it here. It might be difficult to close the eyes, but if you like to try, you can. With your inhale, release the legs and exhale, release the arms. Relax. So let's do the other side. Bring your left arm forward, palm facing the right. Hook your right arm under the left and bring them together the best that you can. This time we'll bring the right leg over left. The right foot can be on the mat or hooked around the left leg or just hanging there. Bend your knees if available. Push your elbows up and hold the pose. Remain focused. Use your breath to stabilize the pose. Don't let your elbows come down. They're going to want to come down slowly. Gravity wants to pull them down, but don't let them come down. Just keep pushing them up. And inhale, come up, exhale, release. Good job, take a break. Okay, we'll do a forward bend this time. I'll turn sideways to show you, but you can face any direction you'd like. Uttanasana, just a standard forward bend with variations. I'll show you when we get there. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, swan dive into a forward bend. So the variations are hands can be on the knees, hands can be grabbing the ankles, Hands can be on the floor. Hands can be in ragdoll, grabbing the opposite elbow. Or I'll add an extra one for you uh, more flexible people is to step on your hands. This is called gorilla pose for obvious reasons. So you can hold it here if you'd like. Keep your knees as straight as you can get them. If they don't get completely straight, that is okay. There's a pose for everybody. So if you're in gorilla pose, release. And let's all stretch upwards first before coming out. Inhale, arms up, reaching high, and then exhale, lowering the arms and relaxing. Great. Let's do one more standing pose, one more balanced pose, and then we'll come to a seated pose. So we'll start with the right knee, hugging the right knee into the body. Again, if you need a wall, move to a wall or hang on to a chair. Uh, if you're hanging on to a chair, use your left hand. Otherwise, hold the knee with both hands. And just relax here, straightening the back. Using your breath to relax and stabilize the pose. We'll take the right knee out to the right side and hold. 
to add a little more difficulty, you can look towards the left side. So we're not done yet. Try to hold it till the end. Inhale and exhale. Return to the center, hugging the right knee. Good. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Great. Take a little break. And we'll switch sides. If you're holding on to a chair, use your right hand to hold on. So we'll bend the left knee this time, grabbing the knee with your left hand or both hands and straightening the back. Breathe deeply, try to relax. I know it's not easy. Release your right hand. With your left hand, open your left knee to the left side. Looking straight ahead or for a little extra challenge, look to the right. Okay, don't lose it yet. We're almost there. Exhale, come back to the center with both hands. Grab your left knee, straighten the back, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Great. Take a break. Move around if you like. Okay, so now we'll come to the mat sitting sideways. And um, we're going to hug in the left knee, but we'll stretch the spine first to get maximum benefit. So inhale, stretch up, get your spine as long as you can. And exhale, hug in your left knee towards your body, your chest. And for those of you who are ready for a little deeper stretch, you can raise your arm and hook the left knee, pointing the right fingers up. You can keep it here. Or if you want a little extra challenge, you can take your left hand and grab your, or your right hand and grab your left ankle. And then twist and look behind you. Close your eyes. Make sure your right uh, toes stay pointed upwards. And relax. A great spinal twist. I'm sure you feel it in your spine right now. Okay, inhale and exhale, release, extend your left leg out, move around if you like to, and we'll do the other side. So when you're ready, bend your right knee and bring the right foot as close to your body as you can. <clears throat> Place your right hand behind you, hand, and twist looking behind you. Inhale, and exhale, release, come back to the center. So next we'll do a pose called uh, Virasana or Supta Virasana. You can start by sitting in um, Vajrasana. You can do the pose in this position if you like, 
or you can take your feet outside. This is a Pirasana, hero's pose. If this, if you have knee issues or this is too hard for you, bring yourself a blanket or a cushion or even a book would work, a thick or a few books would work and place it under your butt and just sit on it. That'll help you uh, get into the pose. If you're feeling enough, enough stretch here, just stay here. If you feel like you can go a little more, bring your hands behind you and just start lowering yourself behind you. If your elbows touch, that's great. If this is a nice stretch for you, just stay here. If you're more flexible, if your back can maybe touch the ground, you can lower yourself onto the mat. And in that case, you can choose your arm positions. Raise them above the head, take them to your side, place them on your thighs, whatever works for you. And just relax there. Notice where you're feeling it. slowly using your arms, taking a support, press yourself into a seated position. So we'll go straight into the next pose, Ustrasana, camel pose. Um, if you have a hard floor or you have um, sensitive knees, you can fold your mat in, um, in three and put your knees over there. Or you can put a blanket under your knees, that's fine. I, I'm lucky to have a comfortable floor here, so I'll just do it without the support. So from table pose, you push yourself up into um, uh, standing on your knees. And there are also several versions to this. I'll show you different versions, so pick the one that works for you. First version, the easiest version, hands on the waist, tuck in your elbows, and we'll just lean back in that position. Second is anyone who wants a little more shoulder exercise, interlace your hands and lean back that way. The most difficult version is with your uh, bottom of your toes on your mat, placing your hands on the, the heels. In this pose, make sure your body does not lean back. You want to push your stomach forward and let your head fall back. So ideally, your thighs will be um, perpendicular to the ground. So pick the version you like, we'll do it together. Inhale and exhale, let your head fall back, looking up to the ceiling, pushing your hips forward, and try to relax. It's a difficult pose to relax in, but at least try. Inhale, slowly come up, exhale into Balasana, child's pose. Spread your knees apart, bring your big toes of the feet together, arms forward, bring your head towards the mat. And relax. So this pose is going to relieve any pressure that you feel in your back. I like to teach them, um, every time we do a back bend, we want to do a forward bend to relieve the pressure in your spine. So just relax there for a few seconds. If you're kind of worn out a little, take a few deep breaths and try to catch your breath. And the next pose we'll do is something easy. So push yourself back up and sit in any comfortable position. Yeah, I like to mi mix easy poses and difficult poses so I don't 
wear anyone out too too quickly. So next pose, let's let's do some head circles here. So hands on your knees, shoulders relax, let your head fall back. We'll do just five, five circles in each direction. Switch when you're done. And when you finish, come back to the center. So next, let's extend both arms forward. Point the thumbs down. Bring the right hand over left. Interlace and go down, up through the hole and extend. If your elbows get straight, that's great. If not, just keep them bent. Take it where you're feeling a nice stretch, but no pain. They say that in yoga, um, about the level of pain of um, a muscle ache, that level is fine, but anything more than that, you should not do it. So if you're feeling more than a muscle ache, then um, you should back off a little bit. We don't want to injure ourselves. And yes, you you can injure yourself in yoga, so you've got to be very careful. Okay, slowly inhale and exhale. Release the pose. Let go of your hands and let's give the wrist a little shake. So we'll do um, the same thing with the other hand on top. Arms extended forward, point the thumbs down. This time bring the left hand over right and interlace. And go down, up, and extend the best that you can. Enjoy the stretch. Okay, slowly inhale, come up and thread, exhale, release, and again give your wrist a nice shake. Okay, let's come to a supine position next, lying on the mat, face up. You can have a pillow under your head if you like. Knees bent. Hands to your side. Or under your head in a pillow. Let's do ankle circles. Bring your right ankle on left knee and make 10 ankle circles in each direction. And then 10 point and flex movements when you're done. When you finish, repeat the same thing to your left foot. This relieves the pressure in the ankles. I recommend doing this every day. Even if you don't have time for a full yoga class, you can just do your wrists and ankles and uh, neck circles every day. Best time is when you get up in the morning. That's when you're the stiffest. When you're done, release. This time we'll bring the soles of the feet together. If you need a strap, you can hook a strap around your feet. Spread your knees open. Grab either the feet or your shin 
or your thigh, wherever works for you, and try to pull the feet in towards your chest. Okay, next is happy baby. If you're using a strap, hook it around your feet and pull down. Or you can grab the outside of your feet or your ankles or your shin, wherever works for you. The goal is to pull the feet straight down so the knees come to the outside of your body, the shins are perpendicular to the floor, and the soles of your feet are facing up. So just pull straight down and hold it here. It's called Ananda Balasana in Sanskrit or Happy Baby Pose in English. Exhale, release and hug your knees. Rock from side to side. Okay, let's slowly come to a seated position. We'll roll to the right, stack your knees one on top of the other, raise your right arm above your head, and left hand be in front of your chest on the mat, and slowly using both hands, push yourself to a seated position. Today we'll do a breathing technique called Brahmari. Brahmari means be in Sanskrit. And as we do this exercise, it'll sound like there's a bee buzzing in our head. Uh, Brahmari has been known for a long time for things like um, strengthening the immune system or giving us the capacity to heal quicker, uh, whether it's a disease or a wound. It also helps um, manage pain better. So it's used for pain management, also uh, people who cannot sleep or people with depression, it helps calm the mind and get rid of extraneous thoughts so we sleep better at night. And um, it also is said to help pregnant women and especially their babies. Their ba babies can hear the sounds that the mother makes. So um, by doing this breath, it's, it has a very calming effect on uh, the unborn child. I was reading this um, medical journal which mentioned the effects of humming, which is Brahmari. Brahmari is basically humming. But this medical journal said that um, by humming, the act of humming, we create a nitric oxide. And comparing somebody who's humming um, to a regular breath, they said that um, by humming, the, nit the level of nitric oxide is 15-fold higher than um, just doing a regular breath. So what are the benefits of having extra nitric oxide in our system? According to studies, it improves the blood flow within our body, so it keeps our body healthier. It also causes anti-inflammatory action in our arteries. Uh, it also helps, um, like I said earlier, boost the immune system, gives, gives us a stronger body. And also a curious thing listed is that um, it kills viruses. It fights viruses and parasitic organisms in our body. Um, I've been asked several times, well, is there any good breathing technique or any yoga that we can do to help us fight COVID? So this is one of those things. It's actually proven to kill viruses. So um, it's a good practice to have, um, especially during uh, a pandemic. So what we will do, 
We will sit comfortably with our hands on our knees. If you need a pillow under yourself, that's fine too. Close our eyes, close our mouth. We'll take a deep inhale, followed by whatever sound comes out. So don't match my sound. I will have a different sound than you do. So it's like sign, taking a deep inhale. Ah, mm. So whatever that sound that comes out is your sound. And every day it might be slightly different, but that is the perfect healing sound for you today at this moment. So we'll breathe deeply and hum. Mm. And do that until you run out of breath. Take your next breath and do the same thing. Repeat it. We'll do it for maybe around five minutes. And uh, for beginners, I recommend that you plug your ears when you start. Because when you hear me doing this technique, um, the human tendency is to try to harmonize. So if somebody's singing a song, we try to match their tone. And we don't want this that in this case. I want I will do my sound and you do your sound. So in the beginning, we will have our hands over our eyes and plug our ears. And then um, I'll tell you when to start and you start your breath. Do a few rounds. If you feel like you're ready, you can hold your sound and not um, get distracted. Then you, if you'd like, you can release your hands and place them on your knees. Or you can continue plugging your ears to the end. So when it's time to quit, I'm going to clap three times. When you hear that, that's, uh, just finish that breath. Don't cut your breath off in the middle. Just let that breath go all the way to the end and then relax. So let's try it together. Sit comfortably, hands on your knees or hands over your eyes, uh, four fingers grabbing your head and plugging your ears with your thumb. Completely exhale. Take a deep inhale. Mm.
So slowly open your eyes. As you can tell, it's a very relaxing, calming breath. So now we will enter into Shavasana, lying on the mat, face up. Um, as usual, I will not record the Shavasana, so you can pause this video. Take Shavasana as long as you want. When you feel ready, uh, maybe move around your wrists and ankles, do a couple stretches, and come to a seated position, then restart the video, and we'll close the practice with our final chant. I hope you enjoyed the practice. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or requests, please leave them in the comment section and I will be glad to address them. So let's begin our chant, hands in Namaste. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Ma Kaschitukha Bhavet Om Shante Shante Shantihi Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.